is Courtney Murdoch from Love Lives On, and today I am speaking with Dr. Jennifer Golbeck, an associate professor at the College of Information Studies at the University of Maryland and a social media expert. Welcome, Dr. Golbeck, and thank you so much for joining me. I'm glad to be here. So the first question I have for you is, in your article on social media in Morning in Psychology Today, you talk about social media pages becoming, <clears throat> excuse me, memorial pages after a loved one has died. Can you tell us about this development? Yeah, so if you look especially at Facebook, uh, if somebody dies on Facebook, their page still stays there, right? There are some formal things that you can do to transfer ownership of it or give people control of it, but just in general, when somebody dies and their page is there, people tend to go to their page and leave messages. Um, most of the time that happens right after the person has died or, or when their friends and loved ones find out that they've died. They'll come to the page and they'll leave messages, sometimes sharing memories, uh, sharing photos, or just kind of expressing grief. And so it kind of becomes a place to leave things you remember about that person, uh, but also to connect with other people who knew that person and kind of have a community around the morning of their passing. Right. And some people think that expressing grief online and through social media channels takes the human connection out of the experience or that grief is something sh that should be done privately and not in such a public way. What are your thoughts on that? I think that maybe isn't a sentiment that comes from people who don't really use social media that much. Um, for those of you, us who spend a lot of time there, and I'm certainly one of those, uh, it is a way that we do a lot of our social connecting with people, especially the kind of connections that allow you to maintain relationships, right? So I often say, you know, I come from a big family. I probably have like 50 cousins, right? Um, and I never see any of them because I live in a different part of the country. And if it weren't for social media, I wouldn't have any idea what any of them had done for the last 10 or 15 years, but now I'm really up to date on their lives and we kind of talk online. Social media is really good for maintaining those kinds of relationships, um, which is a lot of what we do when we're mourning, right? We publicly mourn all the time. We come together for funerals. We get together with people we haven't seen in a long time. Um, we'll wear black or otherwise kind of publicly express that we're in mourning. Mm -hmm. And so doing it on social media, sharing these thoughts is really just an online version of exactly what we've done right. for really centuries mm -hmm. offline. Right. And in your professional opinion, what are some of the key advantages and disadvantages that can arise from grieving online? Yeah, you know, I think it, one of the main advantages is that it does create this community. Um, you know, even if you're there with a lot of people, like in your physical offline community, you have a lot of people who knew your loved one who died. It can still be nice that, you know, you're up at three in the morning and you're feeling terrible and you can go online and there's people there to talk to. Um, similarly, if you live far away, right? So if you live across the country and you have nobody that you know who was friends with this person who's passed on, you have this online community where you can talk to people about that. And so I think creating that community to mourn in is really useful. Uh, at the same time, that's where you get some of the disadvantages emerging. Um, and this especially happens, um, you can get competitiveness around the narrative of someone's life. And you'll see this especially between like parents and friends of a young person who died. The friends kind of have a memory of that person. It's probably different than what the parents had in their head. Um, and you can really get people getting angry at each other with the way that they're mourning and the things that they're sharing because the parents or the family members may want one vision of this person and their friends may remember them in a different way. And so that kind of strife in mourning online uh, can be problematic and it happens. Right. And you talked about this community of support. Um, how do you think social media has impacted the, the ways that we as a society can support people who are grieving by creating that community? Yeah, it gives us an interesting way to do it because, you know, before social media, if you wanted to talk to someone, you know, not in person, uh, you know, you could write a letter, which took a long time, right? It's a long time to send it, to have the person get it, to send a reply. Uh, if you wanted something more kind of instantaneous, you could call them on the phone. But in one way, and, you know, those of us who are social media people know that a phone call can feel really intrusive, right? It interrupts whatever you're doing and says, we have to talk now which may not be what you want to do. So social media gives you this way where you can have these totally synchronous discussions. You can do them with chat or video or you can do them typing. But you can also have these asynchronous discussions. So I can go online, I can post a picture of me and the person, I can share some memory, and then come back a day later and see other people's responses. And so it gives a way of having 
uh, many levels of interaction. You can have the, the very personal, immediate conversation, but you can also have a more informal, asynchronous conversation. So it expands the way we're able to interact with people around that central topic of grieving the person. Right. And are there any rules of social etiquette that apply to expressing grief and condolences online? For example, is it okay to post a photo of yourself at a funeral service? Yeah, uh, this is hard, right? And I think it's hard even offline, right? Like, what do you say to the family at the funeral? That's always a little bit tricky. So I would say, you know, thing number one is be respectful and know that people grieve in different ways. And people are probably going to do things that you find disrespectful. And it's probably not the right time to argue about it. Um, but yeah, the funeral selfie, uh, I really hate the funeral selfie, oh, yeah. right? Um, because the thing, so I think it's perfectly appropriate to say, oh, here's a picture of me and this person, you know, at the beach a year ago, yeah. and you're kind of remembering the times with them, but the funeral selfie is all about you, right? Yeah. And it's, it's sort of there to say, pay attention to me mm -hmm. in my grief. Yeah. And, you know, especially for younger people, you know, you know, say high school students, college students who haven't had a lot of time to learn how to cope with the death of loved ones, like they may have lost a grandparent and that's yeah. it and they don't know how to do it. It could be a manifestation of, like, I don't know how to deal with this, yeah. but it comes across as very narcissistic and selfish. And, you know, if you need help coping, that's the thing you can say. Like, I don't know how to deal with this. I feel really terrible. People will respond to you. But the selfie saying, like, here I am dressed in black. Oh, what a sad day. Like, yeah. it's just not an appropriate way to do it. And so I think, you know, a lot of mourning is a social interaction, right? There's a thing that you do personally but once you get beyond that, whether it's online or in person, you're interacting with other people and there are social conventions to follow. And most people are going to be offended and feel like you're disrespecting the person who's passed if you're doing a funeral selfie. And yeah. so with whatever you do, I think that's the thing to keep in mind. Are other people going to feel like right. you're offending the memory of that person? Right. And how do you think that we will be using technology in the future to grieve the loss or to remember a loved one's legacy online? Yeah, we've tried, we've seen all sorts of attempts at doing this. So there are websites out there that are kind of memorial pages. Um, and there's companies that are dedicated to that, right? You can post a photo and people can come and have kind of like a memory book. Yeah. Um, Facebook has kind of formalized some ways that you can nominate someone to control your profile after you've passed or if you want it to just become a place that people can't post. Um, so there's a lot of experimentation right now around it. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, but I think at the core of whatever it is, is social media and really the way that we're using technology in general now is centered around finding a way to connect with people that we know and that we love, that we have community with, and experience whatever with them. And I think grieving is just one of those. So I think the ways that it happens may be different than kind of how we see it on Facebook now, and I think people will eventually become more comfortable with the technology, especially as everybody ages. And so you get people, uh, you know, who will be eventually in their 40s and 50s and 60s who have been on social media all of their adult lives. Yeah. I think you'll, get, you'll see it become a little more comfortable for everyone. But I think ultimately, whatever the technology is, it's going to be a place to connect and share memories together, um, both immediately at the time of someone's passing, but then also over time. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Goldbeck, for joining me today. I really appreciate it, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Me, me too. Thank you. Thank you. This is Courtney from Love Lives On. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more ways we can celebrate our loved ones' lives now and forever. Mm -hmm.